In today's episode of the Pathmark Presents podcast, I have an interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Rory Fox, who is basically the head of content at Chetaru. And Chetaru is a digital marketing agency that basically focuses on you know, forward-thinking companies that really want to grow digitally and you know, do that in a sustainable way. So um, yeah, let's learn from Rory what Chetaru is all about and how he's thinking about growth. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. Yeah. Give us that, you know, 360 overview. What is Chetaru all about? Okay. Um, so I'd say we're a, we're a full save at service um, digital agency. Um, we help businesses of all shapes and sizes, uh, varying budgets, um, tailoring their budgets. And we do have specialis specialisms in the team. So SEO, content, uh, website building, app building. But what we like to do is deliver all those in one. So it's a, a unified team. Um, as opposed to giving these piecemeal bits that we don't feel necessarily produce um, sustainable impact. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and what types of companies uh, would you guys be be working with? Like, what you know, are we talking? Yeah, small size companies, mid market, enterprise, maybe certain industries that you guys are working with. Maybe give us a bit of an. an yes, yeah, so I think typically, I think in, in the UK we call it uh, SMEs, so mm -hmm. small to medium enterprises. Um, they range from manufacturing firms, uh, specialist manufacturers like fire door manufacturers, but to recruitment companies. Um, uh, we've even got a super, we've got a super yacht charter client, which is a bit un un unusual. Um, but also, um, we're helping a um, cultural improvement organisation um, okay. basically uh, convert all their, their thinking, their methodology into things like apps uh, and content and, and, a, and a powerful website. Very cool. Okay. Um, good. So now, and, and who would be reaching out out of those companies? Like, um, is that, you know, like a CMO really in that organization or is it a business owner that says we just need, you know, some digital support? Like how, what's typically the yeah. scenario? We, t we tend to be, tend to like to present ourselves as a sort of um, an extension of the company where the companies that probably don't have um, in-house marketing or in-house digital at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Companies probably with decent turnover, but they don't have the time to go and build um, a digital team because if they, if they probably get left behind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a CEO would probably be the typical person, but we might, it might be a marketing director, that, that kind of thing. Makes sense. Okay, so, so now that we're thinking how, do, how people learn about Twitter, like what's the sort of the journey that they're going through or in other words, sort of what are the, the client acquisition channels that you guys are, are leveraging? How do people, you know, get aware and get started with Twitter? Yeah, largely, I mean, um, SEO is a really uh, strong suit for us. Um, so people tend to find us organically a lot of the time, um, decent, fairly strong or improving our, our social, uh, output. Uh, it wasn't a strong focus for us before, but increasing mm -hmm. is becoming so, um, we don't do a lot of paid at the moment, but when we need to like de dedicated campaigns, we will do, but a lot of time it is just simply SEO referrals. Yeah, I love that. I mean, a lot of agencies would refer to the cobbler shoes example where there is, you know, they don't have time for their own SEO. It seems you guys are doing a yeah. different. So very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very good. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned SEO, which obviously means people land on, on the website, they come across your content. Like, you know, what role do you attribute to the website? How do you think about the page for a Chetaru? And for everybody who's listening, it's uh, chetaru.com. That's C-H-E-T-A-R-U.com. Um, yeah, how do you think about the website? Like, what role does it play for client acquisition? Yeah, I think it's um, it's understanding who our customer is or our, our prospective customer is. Um, where some agencies might be a bit more niche with their messaging, you know, in terms of being a bit cuter about certain things, we have to be a, a bit obvious about what we are. So, mm -hmm. if we're trying to uh, attract a sort of a CEO of a manufacturing firm who needs digital fairly quickly uh, and comprehensively. We don't want to be confusing them with uh, jargon and that kind of thing. We need to present things quickly. People don't have much time to be scouring through websites. They want the immediate answer there. So we're thinking about that. But then we think about sort of our blog strategy is a, is a big, big part for us. Um, and, you know, directing some of the questions that people might ask on on um, on Google, for instance, a Google search. Uh, we basically address those questions as best we can. So uh, obviously using basically the system of trying to understand uh, what people are really looking for and then trying to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Super interesting. Um, okay. Okay. I mean, every marketer, every content marketer that I, I met so far, they've been always in a way like proud of a couple of things about their page, but also sort of critical in a way where there's 
they're already seeing room for improvement for the next changes. Like, you know, what do you think currently the page, if you think about it, like where's the current strength versus where do you see room, room for improvement? Yeah, I think in, in the past, um, we've probably tried, we've been guilty of trying to include too much. Mm -hmm. So I agree, every, every website is iterative, you know, there's always room for improvement. And we're actually having a bit of an overhaul of our website at the moment because we just need to make sure we, we don't feel the place where our, um, we talk about internally where we want to be, but we don't think our website's doing at the moment. So we use things like Messaging House to make sure we're really clear on what the key messages should be. And I think about those personas and then try to build the content around those. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's always there's always massive room for improvement. It's either that's um, obviously copy is a huge thing in the message, but then in terms of like visuals, keeping up with uh, trends or ahead of trends, those, those kinds of things. Hmm. I mean, what, what we had is uh, and that doesn't doesn't necessarily need to be like true for Chatteroo in itself, but probably also a lot of the clients that you're working with. We had some interesting conversations on the podcast about um, you know how to actually figure out why people do or do not convert. On the website like how do you guys think about this like what type of like i don't know tools or approaches methodologies how do you approach you know if you've got a client let's say that is not getting you know the conversions from the page yeah it's an interesting question um obviously things like capture forms is um heat spots all those kinds of things but also mm -hmm. just going back to basics and think about think about the message is our message really clear enough uh will it really be compelling to the right people Uh, is there something about a message that's putting people off? Are they confused? Are there, is there too much stuff? Are they irritated? I mean, people have, you know, attention, attention spans of seconds now. Um, if they can't find what they want very, very quickly, they'll go elsewhere. Um, so we have to be pretty conscious of that. So yeah, if your page isn't converting, it's going to be some, some of those, some of those things, I think. Nice. Super cool. Okay. Um, Okay, so we learned a bit about Chetaru. We know how you thinking about the page, when you thinking about growth. Maybe tell us a little bit more so that we learn about Chetaru, the company as well. Like what what does it entail to be sort of the head of content and Chetaru? Like what would be sort of the key responsibilities? Um, you know, how have you guys defined that role? Because actually we're seeing, you know, um, specifically when it comes to head of content, when it comes to head of revenue, there's like terms emerging but we'll have to kind of reveal like what's sort of the responsibility behind yeah um i guess you know so the, the, any modern marketer or any digital person it's difficult to be a specialist these days um and i think i've been lucky to work in a fair few uh, marketing departments where you gain other skills experience that kind of thing understand how other people are working and i think we're very much team focused so we have our head of content um We have a head of SEO, head of apps, but we all mm -hmm. work as a team and try to help each other understand where we are and work together mm -hmm. to do that. So as much as it's sort of um, a title, I guess we're all working to the same same goal, really. So everything has to achieve this, the same thing. Very cool. Um, I'd love to get to know you a little bit better because there is so much content on content marketing out there, right? It's kind of like meta, <laughs> meta level in a way. Um, there's so much to learn. Um, How do you pick, like, where do you read? Like, what is your favorite go-to places in order to keep on educating yourself while, you know, making sure to, you know, have high quality content that you're actually, you know, reading and digesting? Yeah, I guess it's, um, it's a good question, really. I mean, HubSpot's the, the obvious place, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Grafton, I find really useful. The, um, I think their email marketing strategy is really good. Um, mm -hmm. it's always got something relevant that I'm, I'm going to read in there, um, learning new things. A lot of time, it, other stuff reinforces things, which is great. But other times, uh, they give you give you ideas, um, things you should be exploring, things you realize you haven't really got cap capabilities to deliver at that time. Mm -hmm. So it's one to sort of put in the back burner, but something to address in the future. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're all about constantly learning. We're, if you think you know everything in digital, you're going to be in a, in a bad place. Uh, because everything's moving so quickly that other things to learn of other people and it's one of those things where you put your hands up sometimes and think wow they've done an amazing job there and we're not we're nowhere near being able to do that kind of thing but we have we have uh, other strengths um but trying to learn from other people really yeah that's very cool um i have some rapid fire questions as we you know slowly but surely approaching the end of the interview i've got some rapid fire questions to learn a little bit more about you Rory. are you ready for those uh, i think so go on then What is the last book you read? Um, that would be, finished would be uh, Woodcock by Richard Smith. Mm -hmm. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? 
Ooh. Um, internally, definitely teamwork. Um, mm-hmm. Externally, I think probably messaging houses and personas. Mm-hmm. If there would be no boundaries in tech, right? So everything is possible. What's the one thing you would fix for your role? Ooh, uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, yeah, I think really interested in um, obviously what's coming from China in terms of things they're capable of doing with 5, 5G, mm-hmm. um, things like the strength of live streaming, um, some of those real incredible experiences, the consumer experiences, uh, the retail mm-hmm. experiences. I think that's some really mm-hmm. interesting stuff to explore. Augmented mm-hmm. reality, of course, been talked about for so long, but it's never really got to a place, I think, where people are really nailing it. So yeah. I think something around there, yeah. Very cool. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? About the company? Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a good question. I think we, uh, we're pretty good at not stressing each other out, which is a fantastic okay. thing. So, yeah. I like that answer. I always love to hear that type of answer <laughs> yeah, rather yeah. than something very crazy. Very good. So now uh, for the last question, uh, um, I want to do a little bit of like time travel, right? And go back to the uh, um, to Exeter University, actually. And um, so you're off into the world of, you know, education. Um, so you basically, you know, finish uni and you're getting off into, you know, your career. Like, what's the one thing uh, that you would give yourself as an advice? Um, that is a very good, <laughs> a very good question. Um, I guess I, I basically I was I did I did classical studies at uni and then I was planning mm-hmm. to be a journalist and all my thinking was about newspapers, magazines, everything physical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it became a bit of a uh, like people mourning for the, that physical print dying out. But I think basically to prepare yourself for that and to accept mm-hmm. that that's going to happen, um, mm-hmm. but embrace the world of digital and so much excitement and so much so many brilliant ways of sharing um, what we call content now, uh, but information, knowledge, creativity. You know, embrace the internet earlier. Um, Rory, I really appreciate you took the time with us today and give us an insight about Chatteru, a little bit about sort of your journey. I want to give you the very last word, right? If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about Chatteru today, what's the one thing that they should remember? Um, that we deliver sustainable growth uh, and real value. Very good. And six things. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Platform Presents. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me.